Hi, this is Ivadian X from The Candid Frame. Now, one of the things that I like about Lightroom is that it allows me to make much more selective adjustments to my images. Now, typically when I go into the Develop module, I go into these controls which affect the image globally. So when I adjust white balance, exposure, contrast, clarity, vibrance, vibrance, or saturation, it's effect affecting the entire image evenly. So for example, if I adjust the uh, exposure slider, it's doing it, it's making a change to the entire tonal range of the image. It's not just isolating it to one particular area. Uh, these controls, the, the highlight, the shadow, and the uh, whites and blacks does isolate those controls to specific areas in the tonal range, like the whites tend to impact the, the really bright areas of the frame, so I can slightly go down here, and those whites uh, or reduce. I can do that for also the the highlights, which tend to be uh, the quarter tones, uh, just shy of being pure white, and I can reduce that there. But I find that when I make those controls, though it can do a good job with certain tones that I'm trying to reduce or increase, it may have an influence on other areas of the image where I don't want it to be to be touched. So for that, I will often use the adjustment brush, which I can get by clicking on it right here. Now, when I click on the adjustment brush, it provides me a palette with many of the same controls that I have in the develop module in terms of exposure, contrast, highlights, and shadows. But the difference being now that only the areas in which I paint in the effect, the effect will be impacted. So for example, I want to sort of shape this image so that you can focus here on the young girl's face. And part of the problem for the image is that there are other areas of the shot that are sort of drawing people's attention. Um, this tabletop, for example, is a little brighter than her face. So it's competing with her face for the viewer's attention. So I want to be able to make that a little darker. I'm going to apply in a vignette a little later that will mark, make the edges of the frame a little darker, which is going to help draw the attention there. But there's still a good percentage of this table that is pretty bright, and I want to reduce that. So what I'll do is I'll adjust the exposure down. I'll go down a full stop, which may be more than I actually need, but that's my a good starting point. So I'll hit the right bracket key to make the paintbrush a little a little wider, and then I'll just slowly begin painting in that area that I want to make a little darker. Because it's an exposure adjustment, it's impacting all the areas of the frame, frame fairly equally, and I can see immediately that it's making everything just a little bit darker. I wouldn't be able to achieve this with a vignette, because the vignette would only affect the sort of the, the edges of the frame. This is leaning towards more, more towards the center. Now, this fellow's shirt in the background is a little brighter than I want it to be. So again, I'm going to make the hit the left bracket key and just make that just a little, a little less bright. I hit the bracket key just to make it a little smaller and sort of isolate those, those changes there. Also, his hand is a little bright. This lamp up here is a little bright, and I'll make some adjustment there. Because it seems to be creating a halo effect there, I don't particularly like that. So if I want to remove that effect, what I can do is just hit the Option key, hit the left bracket key, and then hit the Option key, and I'll see the minus there, and then I can just paint out to remove that, that effect there, and I'll handle that a little differently later. If I kind of want to see where I'm painting things in, I can just click on here where it says Show Selected Mask Overlay, and I'll actually will see those areas of the frame where I'm actually painting it in and is being affected by that exposure change. So if I wanted to refine it, I could go ahead and simply start painting it in. And those areas or spots that I was missing earlier will get will get painted in. And I can do that for all, for all the image. If I wanted to darken her slightly, I could do that here a little bit. And I get to see exactly where I'm painting it in. So this I kind of use as a reference to have an idea of where I'm, I'm, I'm actually uh, placing the effect, but as you can see here, it's a little too dark here, a little too dark on the hand, so that exposure slider is just a little bit too far, so I'm going to sort of pull it a little back until it looks a little more subtle, and because for the most part it seems to be um, mid-tones and shadow detail, I'm going to use the shadow slider to sort of bring that a little in, 
and see how that does it. So I'll go a little bit too far. Seems to mostly be impacting my subject on the right. So I'll have to sort of reduce the impact of it there by hitting the option key and taking it away, the effect from, from there. But I like everything else that's doing within the frame. Now, because I still have this, um, this icon active here, I can influence the images in other ways. I can reduce the clarity here and sort of make it a little more blurred. Typically, people like to increase the clarity, but in this case, I just want to make it a little more blurred. If I wanted to play around with contrast, I could, I could do that. I could increase it. That doesn't seem to look good. Let's see how about if I decrease the contrast a little bit. Yeah, it makes it a little more muted. Now, what I can do if I want to create another adjustment brush I simply click on new and now I want what I want to do is I just want to emphasize her I want to not only increase the contrast in her slightly I also want to make her just a tad brighter she's also already well exposed as is and I'm going to increase the clarity a little bit and so I'll just paint around her her hair her hand and her shirt. Thankfully, I was able to nail focus on the eyes, so that worked out really, really nicely. Again, I'll be able to check exactly where I'm painting it in, and if there's any spot that I'm missing, I'll just go ahead and paint that all in. Again, I'm not going to be completely exacting about this. I just want to be in the ballpark for this, for this tutorial. And now I can, I can go in and I'll increase the clarity a little, a little stronger. Let's actually, uh, let's increase the sharpening just a bit. Even though I apply some global sharpening to the image, uh, let's do it just a little bit more so that she's, a, she's tech sharp. So I like where this is. If I want to make her a little cooler, let me, let me adjust the color temperature slightly. Yeah, that looks really good. So I click done to apply the effect. And now if I see the before and after, I can see I can see the difference in the image. It's it's pretty subtle, but you can see here how the table is a lot darker. She stands out a lot more as a result of me not only darkening the frame but also increasing the clarity and the sharpness so that your eye goes directly uh direct to her. So when I think about the uh, adjustment brush, I'm not really thinking about making very heavy-handed adjustments to, to my image, images. I'm trying to sort of shape the flow of the image or, or shape the flow of how the viewer perceives the image when they take a look at the picture. It's similar to burning and dodging with a black and white photograph. You're darkening other areas of the frame in order to direct the viewer to exactly that area of the shot where you want them to look look first. But thankfully with, with Lightroom, I have more flexibility than just brightening or darkening the areas. I have the ability to increase saturation, to adjust contrast, to sharpen, and to increase clarity if I want to or to do the reverse. So it's, it's a real powerful control, but I really recommend that you use it as subtly as possible to make it most effective. So hope that's helpful to you. Uh, you can find out more about what the Candid Frame does in terms of our interviews, workshops, and a whole variety of other things by visiting thecandidframe.com. And let me know what you think about these, uh, these tutorials and whether or not there's something you would really like to see in the future. All right, take care and see you next time.